Today, I'm picking up the M3 Touring. I had a very short night's sleep. Okay, let's park this thing up and head in. Let's take this bad boy off. Here it is, the M3 Touring. Brand new, it has 15 kilometers on the clock, which is just the coolest thing to see that. Eyes, look at this, it looks insane. It's just nuts. I am so happy with this. First drive in my brand new M3 Touring. Today, we are doing a 500 kilometer road trip in the BMW M3 Touring. I'm lucky enough to have completed 10,000 kilometers at the wheel of my BMW M3 Touring. And today, I'm gonna go over those 10,000 kilometers, tell you everything I've learned about using this car on a daily basis. We're gonna go through the modifications that I've done on this car. We're gonna go through the positives and the negatives. Yes, there are a couple of not so good points about this. They're pretty hard to find. And we're just gonna talk about the overall experience of owning a BMW M3 Touring. And if you're considering it, whether it's a good idea. The car is clearly trying to signal something to us. In typical Swiss weather, we're in Geneva. It started to rain, so we're gonna do a lot of this video from within the car, but that's why I spend most of my time. I think I'm gonna to have to change where this very ugly microphone is. All right, perfect. Start her up. As you can maybe hear, the exhaust I've left standard. Why is that? Because there are some great exhausts for this. Mainly to keep the warranty. Now there is the Akrapovich exhaust, which allows you to keep the warranty, but it's about 8,000 euros, 7,000 pounds, give or take. So yeah, that might seem like a lot of money to put into an exhaust. And the car sounds pretty good. First thing, and we're gonna, oh, actually, this is the beauty of this car. As Soon as you see a little road like this, ho ho, you can just slip it into two wheel drive and have a good time. See ya later. So what have I learned with 10,000 kilometers behind the wheel of this M3 Touring? So I've learned a lot of things. <laughs> One is that it's very playful, <laughs> very playful when it's in rear wheel drive. But let's start with some not so positive things. Let's start with some negatives. And there really aren't that many. So I had to really think hard before doing this video. What am I gonna say as negatives? <laughs> Sorry, it's just so tempting. I mean, I'm in a family car Sliding it around like crazy. Okay, let's be serious. Let's be serious for a second first negative Which is also actually a positive. So we're not starting with something particularly negative these seats these sport bucket seats now It's the question that I get the asked the most often is Seb. I've ordered a, a, an M3 Touring I'm hesitating between the sport buckets and the comfort seats and it's actually a really hard question to answer. It kind of depends who you are and what your usage for the car is gonna be. I personally really love these seats because when you're doing stuff like that, they'll hold you in perfectly. So they're very comfortable actually. So I've done a lot of Geneva to Monaco, five, six hour drives. And honestly, every time I do it, I tell myself it's amazing just how comfortable these seats are, you know, because they're full carbon buckets. They're pretty sporty seats. But for long distance, they're fine. They're heated, uh, they're memory seats, they're fully electric. There's everything you want in them. However, they are a very sporty shape. So that means when you're getting in and out, it's tricky. So, you know, I'm 26 years old. I'm not the tallest or biggest guy in the world. So for me, it's not really too much of a problem. But as soon as you have someone who's slightly bigger, maybe slightly older, if I dare say so, then they're gonna struggle getting in and out of this car. And that is just one thing I've noticed and it's one of the comments I get the most from passengers is, Phew, I mean, these seats are cool, but they're not the easiest to get in and out of. So when you're using it as a daily and often doing short drives where you're getting in, out, in, out, in, out of the car, you do notice that after a while. Another downside of that is they wear really quickly. So I have full leather. You can get them with Alcantara as well on the side bolstering. Mine are fully leather, but still after about 3,000 kilometers, I started to notice some wear on them. So I've put this little, uh, I don't know, cloth to protect the side from when I'm getting in and out of the car. So that's on there, which then means you've kind of paid quite a bit of money to then have an ugly cloth on the side of them. So it seems a little counterproductive, but it's pretty nitpicky kind of stuff. So it's pretty tricky 
finding negatives in this and we'll get on to the positives which will be the easier part of the video in a bit one thing i'm not a huge fan of that i initially actually thought i quite liked are these flappy paddles which look great they actually go well with the red interior on this car but they somehow even though they have carbon finish feel a little bit playstation toy i don't know if you can hear that but it doesn't quite feel, I mean, the M3 Touring is an expensive car now. It's like over 100,000 euros, well over 100,000 euros, around 100,000 pounds spec. So yeah, it is a very pricey car. And it's just one thing that doesn't feel quite up to par. Also, another thing that can lead to the interior feeling not quite up to the actual price of this car is if you don't spec the full extended leather interior. Thankfully, I did. It was a last minute change to add that spec. But if you don't have it, basically all the upper parts of the cabin aren't in this nice leather with this nice stitching. And I've been in, in one which doesn't have that. And then all of a sudden the whole interior kind of changes and the quality feel on the interior changes. So that's definitely something that if you haven't specced is a negative on the inside. One thing also I'd say um, it's a shame that you don't get Alcantara headlining again for the price of the car it would be quite nice to have alcantara headlining right here uh, there's other cars for the same price range and if not sometimes less that have full alcantara headlining so it's the only thing on the inside that may maybe feels reminds you that it's a three series and not a five series guys i feel so bad criticizing this car but I, I wanted to start with the negatives and be like okay this needs to be a proper review there needs to be positives and negatives you just can't come along and say this is the best car ever there's nothing wrong with it at all they did a perfect car because there's no such thing as the ultimate perfect car for everyone. So I was literally like, what am I gonna say? So that's for the interior. So the seats, a couple of little things here and there um, that don't feel the highest, highest quality maybe on the interior. Another thing that can get slightly annoying is the fact that you need to do everything through the screen. You just have like, you know, your front defroster uh, buttons, the front and rear and then you can you know like a couple things for your volume but that's pretty much it all the rest all your driving settings everything basically happens with this new screen which is great i really like the new multimedia system in the all, well, all bmws now because they basically all have it but sometimes it is nice to have a couple physical buttons so maybe i do miss that a little bit in the interior but then again i have some friends i've spoken to who love the fact that it's a you know it's not filled out with loads of buttons like the remember the panameras when they came out and they just looked like an airplane they had so many buttons so i think that's also a little bit subjective something that's maybe not subjective is the steering feel in this car is not terrible but it's maybe just not quite as good as it could be so it's an electric steering and yeah i mean it's it's just one of those where you'd say it's not terrible but it's also not great and when everything else on the car is so great it maybe just stands out as not being quite up to the level of the other parts of the car so the steering leaves a little bit to wish for potentially um, it still allows you to as you saw at the beginning of this video throw it around all over the place and you know get a decent amount of feel back to feel completely in control but you're not quite getting as much information back as you'd maybe hope however on the flip side of that when you're driving around town it's a very relaxing steering rack I mean you just it's so light and it just feels great on a daily use so that's one of those things again it's just not great which everything else in this car kind of is so it maybe stands out a little bit one thing that again is minute but maybe slightly bothering is not being able to get a sunroof in this car and if you can't get a sunroof it'd be nice to then at least get the carbon roof or be able to spec it if you wanted it now the reason i say no sunroof is because if you get the rear tinted windows like i have it can quite quickly feel slightly dark and almost claustrophobic in the back and having a sunroof obviously just if you have passengers in the back suddenly feels just a bit less claustrophobic so shame you can't get that the fix that we found for that was putting this um yeah i mean some people love it some people hate it skylights is that what you could know what do you call these uh starlights there you go starlight ceiling like in rolls royces which you know let me know what you think down below i think it's kind of cool and it gives you know something more entertaining to the rear passengers than just a dark 
cabin. So maybe the lack of sunroof would be one thing that I would put in the negatives. I'm really trying to think what else is there. Ah, yes, the turning circle. Not great in this car. So there's uh, in my driveway, it's kind of like a tight turn and in a, basically all cars, I can do it in one go and with this I really need to get it perfect to do it in one go and I'm often having to do a little three-pointer but yeah I mean again nothing major it's not terrible but it's it's not the best and when you're using this as a daily car you do that's the one thing that makes you realize the size of the car I'll say because apart from that the car kind of shrinks around you in every way and that just kind of reminds you just how big uh, this car actually is for a 3 Series. Okay, I think that is plenty enough of the boring stuff. We can get on to the positives, of which there are many. 10,000 kilometers has made me realize just how good this car is. It is outrageous how much you can do with this car. You can basically do anything with it. So, okay, where to, where to begin? Practicality is so convenient. So the boot is massive. The boot is really big. You know, if you compare it to like a Panamera or something that has like a slanted back, an RS7, you have a deep and wide boot, but not a very tall boot. So you can't fit that much in those. Whereas in this, it's tall, it's deep, it's wide. It's everything you need, really. Did that sound wrong? Maybe sounded wrong. If you're going on a long distance trip, you can easily fit everything you need into the boot of this car. And then the rear seats, same thing. I've had tall six foot plus passengers in the back of this and <laughs> sorry just so tempting to slide it anyway six foot plus passengers in the back and absolutely fine which is yeah the carbon buckets one of the benefits is that they're obviously quite thin so that does help on that side I think but even so just the 3 Series Touring has a surprising amount of space inside of it. The screen, the car play, and all of the little daily kind of gadgets that make this easy to live with are fantastic. So obviously CarPlay connects really well. It's a huge screen, so you get the information really clearly in front of you. But also things like the app. Like I know this isn't just an M3 or a 3 Series Touring thing. A lot of cars have this but it is so cool to be able to like put your heating or your aircon on before you get to the car being able to check your fuel levels to know if you need to you know go fill the car up before you go take it. and things like that just from the app and it has you know keyless go like everything to just make your daily life easy this car will have and that's quite nice because a lot of the cars that have this level of performance don't actually have those things the sound system is great on the inside so if you're well obviously it's on the inside so it's not gonna be on the outside is it sound system is great so if you're doing long distance trips it's you know very well very good soundproofing so you don't hear the outside much and great sound system so if you're playing your music fantastic good visibility and the size the size is one of the positives because Paul Supercars of London and I were lucky enough to go test the Audi RS6 performance the new RS6 performance the video will be somewhere around here and that you know jumping out of this to get into that it suddenly felt really big and that experience made me realize one of the biggest positives of this car, which is it's kind of like a real sweet spot. It's not a small car, but it somehow feels so much smaller and more nimble and almost lighter on its feet than an RS6. An RS6 feels crazy fast, but big. And on a small road like we were on earlier, just feels like a big RS6. Whereas this kind of shrinks around you and all of a sudden you get on those roads and it feels like an M3. And I think that's the biggest kind of sweet spot of this car is it having all of the practical luxuries, gadgets, and everything you need in like a proper luxury daily driver. But then when you get onto a little road, oh, this is tight, there we go, perfect example, or you're driving it around town, it suddenly kind of shrinks around you and you don't lose that usability. Slides everywhere. Anyways, that's one of the things I've enjoyed the most about this car. It's not so big that you're scared about using it around town and things like that. And when you get onto a small road, all of a sudden it just makes so much sense. It's just so usable, so fun. Yeah, I really love it. So now we're on the motorway, so we can talk about the driving in full tranquility. The suspension's pretty good. You know, it's an M3, so it's not the most luxurious ride in the world. But honestly, it's it, I've never really gotten into the car thinking, oh my god, suspension's so hard. It's it's like I had a 911, I was lucky enough to have a 911 Turbo S before this, and the suspension on that. That was that was hard. So all of a sudden coming into this, 
it, uh, it really hasn't surprised me. Maybe I have a slightly skewed sense of what hard suspension is, so I'm maybe not the best person to judge, but from my experience, the combination of these seats and the suspension aren't too hard on daily use at all. <laughs> Always nice to see some of you guys. The gearbox is great. The engine, so fuel consumption, I get about 12 liters per 100 kilometers. I'll do the conversion and put that on the screen in MPG right now. It's not amazing, but it's also not terrible. And again, it's kind of like the suspension. You're not buying an M3 Touring because your first priority is fuel, right? Fuel consumption. Obviously, it's still important. You don't want it to be terrible, but it's not terrible, it's not great. So, you know, it's not one of those things that will be a massive positive. Uh, but it's also not something which is, you know, one of the real negatives of this car. Now, the way it drives, the front end grip on this is outrageous. And the way you can just do whatever you want with it, you can drive it in the way that I am right now in full comfort mode. It's a three series, it's a perfectly good cruiser. You can then whack it in two wheel drive mode and drift it absolutely everywhere. But then again, you can whack it in four wheel drive in mode. It's like it's on rails. It's a total B road cruncher. And for convoys, if you're around a bunch of supercars and stuff, it will keep up with like pretty much just about anything, which is amazing and so much fun. So it just does everything. And it does everything very well. I mean, I really struggle to think of another car that has such breadth of abilities at such a level. One of the things I also love the most, and this is a very niche thing, is being able to open the just the rear glass in the boot to be able to film. Super convenient, but also it's great if you, for example, park in a parking spot right up next to another car or with a wall very close and you can't open the, the full boot completely, you can just open that glass and reach out what you need. I use that every day. I know it sounds like a niche thing, but when I park in my parking space, I'm very close up against a wall and to get anything out of the boot, I just lift that glass section. Overall, having done 10,000 kilometers with this, the conclusion that I've come to is just, as an all-rounder, if you are looking for a sporty, convenient, big but not too big, practical, car. I honestly can't think of anything on the market right now that I would prefer to this. It's not one of those cars that there's a bunch of hype around, you know, is it really worth the hype? Absolutely. I mean, I have not been disappointed with this at all and almost every mile that I do in it reminds me just how great this car is. And there's no situation in which it feels uncomfortable. It feels ready for kind of anything. And the way it just deals with anything you throw at it is pretty amazing. Modification wise, I have modified a couple of things, but not much. I mean, the exhaust is maybe something you could also put in the negatives. It's again, it's not great, it's not terrible. Sounds okay, but you know, it's not like the old E92 M3s or anything like that. So the modifications that I've done is the PPF. So it's a satin PPF. So it's actually black metallic underneath. If you follow this channel, you've probably seen that uh, I did like a whole breakdown of the costs of that. And then then the HRE wheels, which are slightly bigger. So they fill out the wheel arches a bit more and I think look great. And they also give it that M3 kind of feel a bit more. The full black look I thought was cool, but this makes it just just look a bit more special, a bit more, you know, guys, this is an M3. And that's why, for example, I did the uh, red interior as well. I was gonna go full black interior, but I thought, you know, is that a little bit bland, a little bit boring? You wanna, you know, remember that you're in an M3, you're in something special. And the red interior just felt like it added that little extra bit of character to the way this car looked. So yeah, there's not much else I would modify on this. I mean, I've see, I see people modifying them loads of different ways, and I, I do think that's great. Personally, I really like the way it looks straight out the box. And, you know, driving-wise, I, I just think it's so good, and I don't want to risk compromising the breadth of abilities of this car through certain modifications because I do literally use it every single day. I honestly couldn't recommend this car more having done 10,000 kilometers in it. I've been surprised at just how good it is. There aren't really any hidden niggles. As I say, the only real things are just a couple little details on the inside, but that is basically it. Anyways, guys, I'm about to get stuck in rush hour traffic. Another moment in which this car kind of comes to life beautifully because you've got your start stop, you've got your sound system, and you've got your adaptive cruise thing, which will just follow the car ahead so you just put that on and then through stop start traffic it is just managing that alone and it's a really nice place to be so i could bang on about all the positive things in this car for ages but all in all if you're watching this video because you're considering one and you're able to go get one and you have access to one then just go for it honestly you will not regret it it is a fantastic fantastic car hope you enjoyed the video let me know down below if there's anything that you're wondering about this car that i didn't answer and i'll answer in the comments and we can have a little chat there hope you enjoyed it and i'll see you again very soon cheers guys bye bye